This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome back to the channel. This video is in the Atmospheric Science playlist. It is looking at adiabatics and how air is going to cool down with the change of pressure. Looking at rising air and low pressure and how air is lifted up. And look at how water vapor, which is included in the air as it rises up, is going to change from a gas to a liquid and a phase change. And include both the dry and moist lapse rate. So we have this graph, and I'm going to use this graph to describe all the different terms and processes that we're going to discuss in this video. So the y-axis is altitude in kilometers. The x-axis is temperature in centigrade, Celsius. And we have these dashed lines. Now, the green dashed line right here, this is the dew point lapse rate. It is 1.82 degrees Celsius per kilometer. So that means that as you either increase or decrease in altitude, going away from the surface or towards the surface, this lapse rate for dew point or where the dew point is going to happen will change by 1.8 degrees to 2 degrees for every kilometer change. Now, generally, it is when you increase in altitude and you're going towards the dew point where the dew point meets the DALR or the dry adiabatic lapse rate, which is this line right here which is on average between 9.8 to 10 degrees Celsius per kilometer. So the term adiabatic, that means that as the air parcel is going to rise up, there is no change of heat or thermal energy inside that air parcel. So there's no exchange of heat. Whatever heat is in the air parcel from the initial conduction and convection by the surface to cause that air parcel to rise in the first place, that is there. That's the in situ energy that's there. And as the air parcel rises, there is a sharp decrease in pressure and the volume increases of the air parcel and the internal or potential energy or thermal energy inside the air parcel decreases and you have less collisions and it gets colder. So as the air parcel rises, the air parcel increases in size and volume and due to lack of pressure, and this is called adiabatic cooling. Now, if it reverses and the air parcel shrinks based on increasing pressure towards the surface as altitude decreases, then we call this adiabatic heating. But for this diagram, we're discussing adiabatic cooling. So we have this dash line that's horizontal at a certain altitude in, on this graph. This is called the dew point, or the lifting condensation level. It is the point, so the dew point refers to the temperature at which there is a phase change, and there's a change in the level of moisture in the atmosphere. So below it, right here, you have the air containing water vapor at different amounts, which is called humidity. And we measure it in a percentage from 0 to 100, and this is called relative humidity. So 0% is very dry air, which is hard to achieve on the Earth because the Earth is mostly water, and you have some sort of evaporation all around the Earth, even in deserts. And you give 100% humidity, which is completely saturated, and it's basically going to rain at that point in the atmosphere. So you start with a certain level of humidity, let's say 30% down here by the surface, and as you rise up with the air parcel with a change in volume and pressure, the humidity is going to increase and to a point where it becomes 100%, which is the dew point, that temperature where the water vapor will condense and do a phase change back into liquid, which is rain droplets that are very small, but liquid all the same. And you have this phase change over the dew point at a certain temperature where the lapse rate meets the DA LR right here, and you have the dew point, and also the altitude at which this occurs, this temperature occurs at, is called the lifting condensation level. So it could be one kilometer, could be half a kilometer, or as high as 15 kilometers, maybe perhaps on the extreme cases. So this line here represents the change in the atmosphere from water vapor into or above it liquid water and the formation and condensation of water into clouds and various cloud formation processes take place and also the different types of clouds we get from the simple cumulus stratus that are more 
singular and stratified to the more vertical cumulonimbus clouds and storm clouds. Now this red line that extends up, there's a change in the lapse rate. This is called the M-A-L-R or the S-A-L-R. Now the M stands for moist and the S stands for saturated. So this, either one is interchangeable as terms, but it basically means that this air now contains liquid water because it's above the dew point. So it's cold enough to cause or force the phase change from water vapor, which is a gas, into liquid water and form clouds. Now there is a slight change in gradient or angle of this red dashed line, which is the S or M-A-L-R, versus the dry atmosphere with below 100% uh, relative humidity, which is the D-A-L-R here. Now this is 10, roughly 10 degrees per kilometer. This one is around 6, 6 degrees Celsius per kilometer. So there is a change. Now it actually gets slower. So it actually heats up. It's not a temperature inversion. It's still decreasing, but it's decreasing slower than the DALR. Now, why is this? Now, when there's evaporation at the surface of any water body or transpiration, which is evaporation of vegetation. So co combine those two words and we get evapotranspiration. So that's the net amount of evaporation occurring on the Earth's surface to create water vapor that's going to rise in the air with this low pressure system where the air is rising, this lapse rate, this adiabatic cooling. Then it turns into the SALR or the MALR, and you get the water vapor condensing into water droplets, rain droplets. Now, as this condensation happens, the heat, the energy, the thermal energy that was required to initially evaporate the liquid water from the surface has been put inside the water vapor, inside the molecule, as trapped heat. Now we call this latent heat. It's trapped, it's hidden inside the water vapor, and there's a lot of it, a lot of energy stored in the water vapor. Now when that water vapor gets to the dew point and the temperature forces the condensation back into water, all that trapped or latent heat or thermal energy is suddenly released into the atmosphere and it heats the atmosphere causing a slowing down of the cooling or lapse rate. So rather than staying at 10 and going like this, it slows down to six degrees centigrade per kilometer because of the latent heat that's been released back into the environment, heating up the air and causing this air parcel to again rise because it's hotter than the ELR, which is the environmental lapse rate, the average temperature of the atmosphere at a certain altitude. Now this latent heat is there because of the high heat of vaporization of water. Water is kind of special. It takes a lot of uh, heat to evaporate water, which is good because otherwise one sunny day you'd have the entire oceans just evaporate out and have crazy storms, which would wipe out most life on earth and soil and trees and forests and farmland. So it's not good that water would be easily evaporated. It's good that it takes a lot of energy to heat up water to eventually cause it to turn into water vapor in evaporation and then come back and release that energy into the atmosphere causing these larger clouds, which again would in turn allow it to rain heavy and bring the water back to the oceans to complete the water cycle. So there you have it, a complete diagram showing the two types of, of air and water vapor, both dry and saturated, looking at dew point, condensation level, look at cloud formation, relative humidity, latent heat, altitude, temperature, lapse rates of various types, both dew point lapse rate, the dry lapse rate, and the saturated or moist or wet lapse rate, phase change through chemistry of water vapor into liquid, and also we can look at the different types of clouds and precip formed through this process. This is the Earth Science Classroom. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. Uh, check out more videos on our channel. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you again.